running over to River Falls. We've heard of Pitchfork. Matter of fact, we've been here once before. Good beer. We like it here. Well, the nice thing about this brewery is they're new, so they try a lot of different things. Uh, today I'm trying a cherry stout. We came to Pitchfork to celebrate our fifth wedding anniversary and his birthday. This is our first, my first beer outing. I hadn't been out here yet, so we wanted to come out here and support a local brewer and drink beer. I come in probably about one time a week, sometimes twice. I live about 10 miles away, so it's, it, it's a convenient drive, and they always have really good beer on tap. Hi, my name is Sarah Edwards, and you're at Pitchfork Brewing in Hudson, Wisconsin, and I am part owner and front of the house manager. Pitchfork Brewing um, got its name from Jesse's uh, brother-in-law, actually. Jesse's one of my business partners. We kind of threw it out there to family and friends to find something that had kind of a rural feel to it, being that we're right on the outskirts of Hudson and uh, we're all very kind of egg friendly. And so we were just hoping to find something that had something kind of rural but yet edgy and uh, Pitchfork was brought up. The Minneapolis brewing season exploded about eight years ago and we felt that Hudson didn't have anything at that time. Uh, two years ago when we started thinking about this. It's definitely something that we just saw as being a great opportunity to do, especially with you know Mike Fredrickson being such an awesome brewer. My name is Mike Fredrickson. I am the head brewer and part owner of Pitchfork Brewing Company. I discovered craft beer uh, actually at about at the age of 19. Um, got, got my hands on some Summit Great Northern Porter. Once I had that beer, I felt, absolutely fell in love with it. I ended up uh, buying my own starter kit at 21 and started brewing like crazy. I decided to open a brewery when Sarah and Jason, uh, my partners, uh, contacted me about starting the brewery. And about two years prior to that, my, I was a house painter. Uh, my wife was, kept encouraging me to, you know, start a brewery, you should start a brewery, your beer is very good. You know, and so it was, uh, it kind of just transitioned into it. What makes Pitchfork Brewing different than other breweries is the fact that we're very small, I think. Uh, we are a five barrel system, which is, I think, the smallest commercial brewery that I'm aware of. We also use um, as many locally sourced ingredients as we can and most of our beers are made with uh, whole leaf hops versus pellets. So that's one thing I think that kind of makes us stand out. As you can see, I'm standing in front of our brew house, which is a uh, no control panel. Uh, it's basically myself, our, the, you know, the assistant brewers with thermometers and mash paddles. We don't start with just one single base grain. Uh, we tend to order uh, specifically to each beer. Um, so if I've got a German beer on the list, it's always a, you know, 100% German leaf hops, 100% German ingredients. We also do some unique things being environmentally friendly that we can do that we're very, because we're very small. We use ice, 100 gallons of ice uh, to chill our beers. We've basically been using the same 100 gallons of water since we started to chill all of our beers. I think lo using local products from just down the road is something that makes us very unique in the beer industry. Our maple syrup is also just from down the road and it's a great guy that comes in and just started saying, oh yeah, I've got maple syrup lines. Ends up that he has over three miles of tubing going through his woods into the ravine to make this maple syrup and so that's been a great resource for us to utilize that. There is so much variety in beer styles out there and uh, we want to bring as many as we can to the customers. So we've been open for 10 months now um, and we are, we've already done 28 different styles of beers and then the ones that become real popular we tend to bring them back you know once every two months or so and then switch of course with all seasonals and that kind of thing. We're designed that way, seven fermenters, we've ordered an eighth um, so we can small batch uh, all kinds of different varieties of beer um, put it out there in front of our customers, see what kind of feedback, you know, we get from them, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. The honey wheat is the best. It's drinkable, it's easy, I could probably drink it all day long. They've almost always got something new, uh, and, and they always have a, a firkin that uh, comes out every week, and then that's usually a pretty good beer too. Definitely our most popular beers are Pitchfork Pale. It's one of our flagships. It's just a great standard 
pale ale that um, people love. So we've had that on tap since we've opened our doors and I think we always will. Our Pitchfork Pale Ale uh, that is 100% Cascade hops, American Ale 2 yeast, our raw pale ale base, um, some specialty grains in there. The other beers that are popular is the Barn Door Brown, which was a big surprise for us. We never were anticipating that one being one that we would always carry. It's 100% English ingredients, more of a malty style brown, not, you know, over the top hoppy. Um, you know, the Kent Golding's hops in it tends to leave a little bit of spice characteristic. There's a small 20 minute addition on it that kind of gives it that character, but uh, mostly it's the Maris Otter malt. And then every other lager that we do is our German, German Pilsner, 100% um, uh, Weyermann Pils malt. It takes a while, you know, it's truly lagered 53 degrees in the primary and then cold conditioned at 39 for a um, long time. At the beginning of the month, we sit down and decide what beers we want to do that month. And then I order specifically to each batch of beer. Uh, we try to introduce new styles each month. We're huge in giving out samples. We put table tents with descriptions on there and we've got our, uh, our chalkboard with the standard rate of measurement for color, the IBUs, and the, the alcohol percent on them. So we try to give you as much information, but really tasting the beers is the way to figure out what you might like. So there's a lot of, awful lot of people who find that there are beers that they, uh, that they never thought they'd enjoy, take a sample of it, and they, you know, they fall in love with them. I stopped in next door at Patty Ryan's to have a beer that is only served there, made by Pitchfork. It's called the Irish Ale, Irish Whiskey Ale. It's the only place you can get it, and it's one of my favorite beers. When I was painting houses, the owner of Patty Ryan's, Mike Ficino, was a, uh, he was a builder. And so I happened to do a lot of his painting on a, for about somewhere around 20 houses. So I got to know him really well prior to us uh, doing this. So we, we have a great relationship with them. They're essentially our food truck. They've got a rotating menu for our tap room of appetizers that they produce and they use our beers and the sauces and that kind of thing, um, you know, which kind of makes it special and specific to here. It's just a natural thing for us to be able to um, supply little small little appetizer menu for him and then in return he's doing a uh, Patty Ryan's Irish whiskey ale for me so it works out the, the relationship works out great because on a Friday when I'm crazy busy and we have a little bit of spillover people will go next door have a beer come back over have something to eat or they'll start next door and come over here and have something to eat and it's been a great relationship. We only distribute to local restaurants, so we're in about six restaurants in Hudson, one down in Prescott, we're talking to a few places down in River Falls and possibly New Richmond, which are still within about a 20 mile radius of here, so we've just decided to self-distribute and keep it small. Tap room is our focus and we do a ton of growler sales. I love the growlers, just the fact that uh, you know, the, the recycling aspect of it. We've ordered 2,000 of them now, you know, and we'll be order, have to order them again. So we got quite a bit of circulation out there. We're in Wisconsin, so we can fill anybody's growler, which uh, kind of throws off the people in the cities because, you know, in that area, they have to go to the brewery, you know, that's, that's on the container. So that's kind of nice. Distribution wise and bottling wise, I would sooner stick to the growler format for as long as possible. When we were building the tap room out, we tried to repurpose, resource, um, up, up cycle, as they say, you know, as many things as we can. My horticulture background, Mike's a big farmer, has chickens, things like that. We wanted that to be kind of, you know, expressed in the motif of the, of the tap room here. So Jesse, Mike's wife, has an aunt that is selling her farm at the time when we were designing this and so we were able to go there and collect quite a few things. We've got all the seed sacks up in the rafters which help with our acoustics. Mike was a painter in his previous life and uh, he had found these light fixtures on the wall that um, he repurposed. Just wanted to try to get that kind of you know country theme a little bit. Of course the chickens are everywhere so and we also have a local artist. She does painting parties um, the first Wednesday of every month up here and the rooster has been a very popular one. We've done that twice now. I'm sure we'll be doing it a third time soon because everybody loves the rooster, so. The bar came from um, Craigslist. We found some nice cherry flooring that pulled all the nails out, sanded it down, and here we go. The booths came from a rec center, teen center down in Lakeville. Mike sanded those all down and finished them up nicely, and. 
they turned out great. We also have the pulleys from the lights came from Jesse's aunt's farm, as well as a lot of the other decor in here, the you know miscellaneous pitchforks everywhere and the bottlers. Try to make you know the atmosphere a lot of fun for people to come and be comfortable. And the people do say that, that it's one of the more comfortable tap rooms I think that they've been in, so pretty proud of that. If I met somebody on the street, I would tell them to come to Pitchfork because they have really good quality beer, a large variety. They have a nice affiliation with the restaurant next door so you can get some food here. Come see Pitchfork because it's a local brewer and it's great to support the local brewers. Come on in. Come on in. It's That's great a lot of beer. Fun. It's, it's fun. kind of cool to, to be part of uh, something new, something exciting. Go to Pitchfork Brewery. I definitely think that uh, Wisconsin, Western Wisconsin and Minnesota are a good beer destination for sure. We've got some great breweries in the cities and uh, we think we're a pretty great brewery here. I think it's great people like to come in here because this is the only place they can get it and it makes it more desirable. And At Pitchfork, it's really the, you know, it's craft beer at its essence. Well, thanks a lot for your interest in Pitchfork, and we hope to see you all real soon. Thanks a lot for coming out and spending the time, you know, and, and showing some interest in, in our brewery. And please swing into Pitchfork Brewing and, and try some samples of some beers. You might find something you like. <laughs>